Howdy folks, Jake here again with Banjo Ben, and today we're gonna to talk about banjo straps. And we kinda of have a little selection of the most popular kinds. Uh, I'm gonna show you um, how they install because there's some variations here, and I get this question a lot. So we're gonna go over those types. I will say, starting off, one type that I don't have present is on some lower end banjos. Uh, they'll have like these little studs uh, with a, a triangular shaped swivel bracket which are designed for like a metal clip type strap. Uh, we don't deal with anything like that. All of our straps are, are pretty much non-marring as far as we don't like those metal, metal clip type straps. And also a couple of these options will even work on the types of banjos that have those uh, swivels. Um, not all of them, I'll explain that as I go and the reasons why, but there's a, the, the two on the end here are always a safe bet for uh, working on about any kind of banjo you got. So uh, let's start with the one I get the most questions about is the cradle strap. A lot of people ask how this works. And uh, as you can see here, uh, right off the bat, we have some adjustability, just kind of a, a basic slip knot type technology, if you will. You can kind of reverse engineer that, take it apart and, uh, and move it one direction or the other. Um, with all of these straps, I'll say right up front, as far as getting it adjusted where it fits you, that's a personal thing. I, there's nothing I can say to help you with that. I do recommend that you sit in a chair with a banjo in your lap and adjust the strap where it's the same as when you stand up as it is when you sit down. That way you, your, your, your hand is not, you know, it's not ruining your muscle memory and you're having to learn two different arm positions. That way everything kind of stays in the same place. Okay, so with all the disclaimers out of the way, let's get to the, uh, the uh, main event here. So this is a cradle strap. I don't know if I can get this all in frame. We got the big pad, the wide piece that goes over your shoulder. And what this thin piece does, how this is designed to work, is it, it literally, if you can see how my hands, if I were to hold the banjo like this, like you're cradling it. Um, and that's where it gets its name. So what we wanna do is we'll start back here and we just take this little thin piece and just on this side of the tail piece, I'll put it underneath the hook. So what that looks like back there, I'll do it up here so you can see, I'm just sliding it underneath the hook like that. So I start in the back and uh, Anyway, you just kind of work it all the way around there. You can see what I'm doing. Kind of bear with me. This might be kind of a long video, but trying to be somewhat thorough. You can see how we go all the way around. Then when we get down to this point, we want to grab onto that and pull it out around like this. Okay? So what we've done, you can see we've created a cradle all the way around the uh, rim of the banjo underneath the underneath the hooks. Now, with the cheaper banjos, like the type with the brackets that I mentioned before, and even thing like open back banjos with the the shoe lug, uh, the uh, um, the shoe lug brackets, I guess you could call it, um, where there's not as much clearance between the hook and the rim, a cradle style strap will not work. Uh, that even includes things like the Deering Good Time. That's a real popular banjo that you can't really use a cradle strap on because there's just not enough room between the hook and the rim for it to fit. Uh, at least not without some whittling. And uh, if, if you want to do that, that's certainly your prerogative, although we don't, you know, uh, recommend or encourage that to be the case. So with these uh, levies, this is a, uh, uh, not a levy, I'm sorry, Lakota. Uh, this is a real nice buffalo, uh, American buffalo hide strap. Very soft and pliable, very good quality. And as you can see, they come with these uh, two barrel screw sets. And uh, I'm not going to open this one. I've got uh, one on the side here. I'm going to show you how that works. So at this point, once you kind of got everything um, lined up and through here, here's another big point of adjustability. You see all these holes along this thin piece? we can adjust the length of the strap probably the most efficiently right here. Uh, there's actually so much adjustment here, you may not even have to fool with the other end of it that I showed you earlier. So we just run that up through here like so in that slot, and then you run it back down in this one. And you just kind of pull it through until it, it fits like I explained earlier. And then you're gonna line these two holes up. There's a 
holes here and here, and that's what these barrel screws are for. Um, also called Chicago screws. So that's what the, that's what they look like. And what I do is I'll take, sorry, I'm doing this on camera. I fumble a lot because I'm trying to stand where you guys can see. So I'll run the, uh, the female end of the screw through like so, and then I'll take the male end and you just thread it into there. Yeah. There we go. Anyway, you screw it down. It even has a little flat head where if you want to really get some torque on it when you get it down, bottomed out, you can. Um, and then you're set. You put one there and you put the other one there as they're provided. And you have a very good, secure, stable uh, platform for your strap. Uh, now, what I do recommend, another thing, and sorry if I'm uh, stopping and starting a lot with my uh, verbiage. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I'm being thorough here and explaining all this. Take on the uh, threads of the Chicago screw. Put you a little bit of Loctite if you got it. If you don't have Loctite, just a, uh, take a finger, little bit of fingernail polish on a brush and uh, paint those threads before you, right before you put it together. And when that dries, that'll keep it from vibrating loose. Uh, and you can still take it apart later if you want, especially with that nice slot there for the the flathead screwdriver. Okay, so anyway, that's a cradle strap. Now, with a cradle strap, you have the, the advantage is that it's the most secure strap. As you can see, it's hugging uh, all the way around. There are two things that some people don't like about this and would choose to go with one of the other options. One thing is the way it wraps around the neck uh, when you're holding it against your belly, um, it tends to slightly cant the banjo forward like this. So instead of it being kind of leaned back, like if you like to look over the, the neck and, and see the fingerboard, it prevents that a little because it makes it cant forward just a little. Personally, I don't mind that a bit. Being a guitar player, I like a straight up and down um, positioning of my hands. It feels more comfortable for one. Um, and you're supposed to just really look at these markers on the fingerboard anyway. You're not really supposed to look over the front. Um, although it certainly isn't, uh, there's great players who, who prefer to do that, but. So that's, that's an entirely different conversation by itself. So anyway, that's one of the things that some people may not like about a cradle strap. The other thing is there's a school of people who argue that because the strap is making full contact all the way around the rim with the weight of the banjo against it while you're holding it that way is that it dampens the sound a little. I've not really experienced this to any noticeable degree to the naked ear, but it certainly is a, uh, um, at least theoretically, it, it does make sense that it could do that. So, okay, that's the uh, uh, Lakota Leathers cradle strap. So moving on, the next one we have is a Lakota Leathers non-cradle. And as you can see, we have the main part of our strap, which is adjustable um, on both ends, just like the first one I showed you. But instead of a cradle design, with this one, you can attach it anywhere, uh, just to a hook or a couple of hooks or whatever you feel is more secure. And the advantage of this setup is you don't have to, on, on this side, you don't have to go around to the bottom. Um, I still, on, on the tailpiece side, uh, you can go around the bottom. That's really part of your adjustability on these is where you attach to which hooks. That's subjective. You can do that however you want, wherever you want. But how this one would work is we would go, see if I go around the top side of the neck, I don't have that, like the cradle style that's coming around the bottom tilting it forward. I don't have to worry about that. So this will literally just hook on to, you can either do one hook or I can, you know, thread it around to a couple hooks if you want, want it to be a little more stable. And then you come up here like this and we'll line these holes up just like before. And then I won't show you this whole process again just for the sake of time, but you take the Chicago screw, pop it through, put a drop of Loctite or fingernail polish on it, tighten it down, and you're good to go. Um, this, this style though, most people just go around one hook like this. And uh, if you want to shorten it, you can come up here like this, line these two holes up, and then once you get it tight, this excess, you can just snip off the excess. Just make sure of where you have it before you go trimming on it because you can't put it back once you cut it off. 
Um, and you don't even have to cut it off. It, it doesn't hurt anything to have a little excess. So you would just do what I showed you there on both ends of the banjo, this side and this side, and you could do them both on the bottom, uh, one on the top, one on the bottom, uh, vice versa, it, just really however you want to. There's, there's freedom in how you do that. Okay, so that's the Lakota leather non-cradle banjo strap. So we got that out of the way, both very good options. Um, now let's go ahead and do this one because the last one I have to take the resonator off. This one is probably the most comfortable strap that we sell. I know it's not gonna win any beauty contests, but it's got that neoprene bike seat type material. And uh, my dad worked construction his whole life and was a banjo player. And he had lots of neck and back problems. And this was the only strap that he could comfortably wear for an extended period of time. And it didn't pinch a nerve or, or hurt him uh, with the weight of the banjo across his neck like that. So this one's just a typical adjustment. You have uh, just kind of like a, a belt type adjustment or a backpack uh, buckle type adjustment. And this strap will work on any banjo. It doesn't matter if it's one of the cheaper ones with the brackets. Of course, you won't use the brackets. Uh, we'll just attach it to the hook. Uh, but this one's real simple. It's got these super heavy, like military grade buckles, um, which... Uh, makes it easy to put the banjo in the case too. You can literally just take the strap off uh, real quick. But what I do to attach it is I would remove the uh, remove the, the buckle here with the loop and then simply thread the loop underneath a J hook. I say simply, it's usually, usually happens simply until you get on camera. Okay, so when I get to this point, I have this open end of the loop. I take the buckle, run it right back in there and pull it tight. See, easy as that. And then uh, you can adjust your strap, clip it in. Uh, you can put this really on, in, on any hook to where it suits you and uh, you're good to go uh, with that one, real simple. And then when you wanna put it in the case, you can just take it loose on both ends. You would do that, this what I showed you here happens on both ends. There's two of these, you see the other end here. And so you just unsnap it from both ends uh, line them up like that, put it in the case. You can roll this up and throw it in the headstock area or whatever you want to do. So let's take this loose. Okay, the last one is the Huber strap. And uh, this is like a lot of high-end straps. It's, it's sewn, and this is really a, a beautiful strap, real nice uh, basket weave pattern. You have to take the resonator off, which is these four thumb screws. Once you get them all the way off, the resonator pops off. I hear my FedEx man pulling in right now, probably delivering me a whole bunch more straps. What do you think? <laughs> I'll try to get this done before he goes knocking on the door. Nope, oh, he's honking at me. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, once we get it off, this, you have to take a nut loose uh, in, in what I recommend doing with this one is doing your test fit before you do this. So sit down with it in your lap, kind of figure out which hook it's going to attach best to for your length. Uh, this one, all of the adjustment is done based on which hook you're going to attach it to. So once you figure that out, uh, you literally just take this nut off. This hook will slide down. You slide the hook back through here, put it over the tension hoop, tighten it down, and you're good. And I, you if you don't have a gauge or anything to make sure your tension's right, just kind of hand feel the hook on each side of it, the nut on each side of it, and make it feel the same way. Make it feel like you have the same amount of torque. And you'll be close enough. You're not gonna be messing it up. Um, it takes more than just one hook being off to mess up the head tension or anything like that. But if you do that, you'll be, you'll be on the money anyway. So anyway, I hope that helps y'all. And like always, we really appreciate you for, for staying with us and watching. And uh, until next time, may your calluses never flake. Y'all have a good one. Thanks a bunch.